Welcome back. It is not the same feeling than having my students in front of me, but we need to give it a shot and try the best that we can. So let's start with the chapter of lipids. I'm gonna start writing. I already have a little bit of writing. So let's see how that goes right now. And for that, we're gonna start by describing what lipids are. And when we talk about lipids, that has to do with the different kind of molecules. We have seen the molecules of um, carbohydrates in which we have something in common because in carbohydrates we will have polyhydroxyaldehydes and polyhydroxyketones. When it comes to the family of proteins, we say that they are made from the building blocks that we discussed that we call amino acids. But when it comes to lipids, there is nothing that we can do to group this family because lipids will have many different kind of functional groups. But in all cases, they will have a high content of carbons. And because they have way too many carbons, they will behave as the family of alkanes and they are no water soluble. They will be soluble in organic solvents. According to the function, we can divide the family of lipids in um, the function of being energy storage. We know that lipids can be a source of a fuel for our bodies. And also, uh, lipids are an important part of membranes. And also, they can behave as chemical messengers. We're going to discuss um, a little bit of the simplicity of some lipids. And in this uh, short video, I don't want to get any of my videos to be too long. We're going to say that the simplest structure that we look for is what we call carboxylic acids. And if we say the word carboxylic acids, because we will have a high content of carbons, we're going to call those fatty acids. And if it is in the family of lipids, we're going to say, let me call this A, that a fatty acid will have a long hydrocarbon chain. And if it has a long hydrocarbon chain, uh, we will have a carboxylic acid group. It's likely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'm going to put a number 12 in here. If it is a fatty acid, we're going to say that fatty acids will have an even number of carbons. Even number of carbons. So we're going to call them to be 12 carbons long, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So that is the simplest lipid that we can have. It's just a free carboxylic acid. The second one that we can have is called an ester. And for an ester, we can have two examples. We're going to call that a regular ester. That if it is with a very long hydrocarbon chains, that will be called a wax. If it is a wax, that is going to be the product of the reaction of a al an alcohol with a very long hydrocarbon chain and a fatty acid with a very long hydrocarbon chain. That's going to be called a wax. Another bond that we will find in this family will be phosphoester. That's one. And also an amide. And if it is amide, you will have most likely to be the unit of sphingosine that we're going to describe in a little bit. Sphingosine to be described in a bit to make an amide bond. And this amide bond is going to be the one attached to the very long hydrocarbon chain fatty acid. Let me just put that that way. So that will be the fatty acid part. It's going to be reacting with an amine to make an amide. So we will have an amide. That is one more. So these three, I try to discuss at least part A, B, and C for now. We're going to say the second to the steroids and the family of ecosanoids for another video, not to make it too long. So let's now flip the page just in case all right so we have said the word a fatty acid but when it comes to fatty acids we can have the fatty acids could be 
saturated fatty acid and an example is a palmitic acid that means this type of nomenclature here indicates how long is the hydrocarbon and that it has not double bonds at all so palmitic acid is a saturated fatty acid it's actually found in palm trees and that one will be 16 carbons long without counting let me put it in here no counting one two three four five six Fourteen, fourteen, sixteen. You count for me, please, because I don't know if I have sixteen. But that will be palmitic acid, which is a saturated fatty acid, zero double bonds. Now we also will have monounsaturated, and this nomenclature here indicates that is eighteen carbons long, and it has one double bond, and this delta indicates the position where we have that double bond so if i will put that double bond it's actually a cis good fat when i put the double bond that will be my carbon number nine eight seven six five four three two one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 16, 17, 18. So that will be the fatty acid of oleic acid. This is actually called an essential oil that will be found in um, olive oil. Another one also found in plant fats, like in avocado, a good one, that will be linoleic acid, which will have 18 carbons long let me just put an 18 and do a cartoon and then it's going to have the double bonds in the positions 9 and 12 so this one will be carbon number 9 and then let's put a squiggly line because i am not counting the carbons so let's say that this one here is carbon number 9 and 10 11 and 12 so in part of the nomenclature I know that is 18 carbons long, so that is 18 carbons long, and it has two double bonds in position number 9, because you only mentioned the first carbon, and 12, and that's what goes right after the delta. Now, when we discuss fatty acids, we also look at what is called the omega-3. I will have to do that drawing again, just in case. But an omega-3, it will be counting from the last carbon. So we say we have the alpha is the uh, first carbon after the carbonyl. And then we will have the omega, which is the last carbon. So if it's the last, carbon number three from the last. So we say this is carbon the last. This is the omega carbon. So counting three from the last, one, two, and three. That will be an omega-3 fatty acid. I will not count how many carbons I have. Let's say that this one has an even number of carbons and it has a cis double bond, three carbons from the last. Because remember, this is the alpha carbon, which is the neighbor to the carbonyl, and the omega, which is the last carbon from the carbonyl. So if we do that, we know that we are having what is called a good fat. Now, what is that that we call a trans fat? Trans fat is because cis double bond is easily found in nature. Plants are making good fats, which are called cis. Cis, because we have that the double bonds have the hydrogens both to the same side. But in a trans fat is man-made. You will have the reaction of Hydrogenation is the same reaction that you will have for an alkene. So if you have an alkene and you use hydrogen and platinum, you will produce an alkane. But when we do the reaction using what is called partial hydrogenation of fats and oils, instead of getting just a saturated fat, we will get a mixture. So if you have, let's say, a good fat, that has cis double bond, abundance of cis double bond during the partial 
hydrogenation, we will get a mixture of saturated fat and also trans fats. And that's not good for us. These are the trans fats. And these fats are actually banned in food industry, but they are still being made. So what we're gonna do next is, let's see my outline. How are the double bonds affecting? The fluidity of membranes depend on the content of cis double bonds on the fatty acids that are being part of the lipids forming the membrane. And in this case, I had the example so we can look at the trend. Palmitic acid, which we know now that has, is saturated, has a melting point of 63. By increasing the length, so we have two more carbons for stearic acid. Now we see that the melting point is increasing. Oleic acid has the same length because we now have two of them with the same number of carbons, but one has one cis double bond and that cis double bond creates a vent and that decreases the melting point so if i'm gonna do a drawing when you have just a saturated fats like a saturated fatty acid it's easy to stack that will be molecular interaction of london dispersion forces between two of the same we have seen something similar to that when we discussed boiling points in the organic chemistry one. So these ones can stack and have strong interaction. But when you have a cis double bond, during the cis double bond, that creates a bent. I actually have a picture from a textbook. Let me see if I can find that. Oh, I have it in here. I have that picture in here with me. So when you have a saturated fat, doesn't have the bend. But when you have a cis double bond, that creates a bend that is going to be useful for the fluidity of membranes. Look at this picture. I have that in my PowerPoint that so you can also can look at. If you see in here, we have saturated fats. They stack together. When you have an oil is because in the triglyceride that I'm going to discuss in a minute, you will have bends that separate those uh, long hydrocarbon chain. Now continuing with the trends, the more double bonds we have, and of course if they are made by nature, we discuss that as being cis double bond, the lower the melting point. So after having more than two double bonds, then we will see that these substances will be liquids.